What's up, YouTube? Sorry about the uh, delay and any update. Uh, just computer problems and everything else, so we're going to give this another shot. Anyway, I uh, just wanted to bring you up to speed with the conversations that I had with my doctor and where I'm going from uh, where I'm at now. So uh, if you're curious to know what the scar looks like after five months, I don't know. That's what it is. Um, how do I feel? You know, actually, the past two days, I've had quite a bit of uh, tingling back in my arm. I think more than likely I slept on it wrong. I've been trying to be more conscious about sleeping with my arm bent since my nerve's been transposed over the bone. And uh, so now the real resting point for my nerve is when my arm is bent versus when I straighten it, it is pulled and pops over the bone. And that's where all the problems arising from. I've pretty much pinpointed that. I told the doctor that uh, yesterday and uh, emailed them and said, hey, you know, um, I'm 99.9% .9 sure it's coming from that. You know, it, he said, you know, it could be from my wrist, but I don't really get tingling here. It's more or less in my tips of my fingers and on the back of my hand. And I feel it in the morning if I slept on it weird or at the end of the day if I've been doing a lot of, you know, bending and straightening and so on and actually i've also noticed that when i walk around it tends to get irritated because when you walk around your arms are usually straight hanging at your sides it's kind of swing naturally so uh and then i i asked him you know he had sent me uh the operative report because i've been trying to see somebody out here and i had to get that before they would agree to see me so that i could review it and determine whether they wanted to take me on as a patient and i've got it here so i thought it would be cool it's super detailed and that was kind of reassuring. I mean, I still have problems, so it doesn't really fix that. But um, it's not like this guy doesn't know what he's doing. I mean, uh, there's a insanely uh, specific description of the procedure. In fact, you know, I'll, I'll do my best to try to uh, maybe uh, include this in the description below. Um, I can probably cut and paste this in so it won't be too bad. Um, but it's interesting. I'll, I'll read some of it to you. So after the, you know, dissection and the decompression, uh, it says the ulnar nerve was examined and I found that there was a distinct location of compression at the cubital tunnel with an endematous nerve proximal to this site. Next, I took the elbow through its range of motion and found that the nerve subluxed over the medial epicondyl. So basically, when I had mine done, the thought was, well, let me decompress it and then I'll bend your arm back and forth and see if it moves over the bone. If it does, then I'll have to transpose it, which he did. Therefore, I elected to proceed with the anterior subcutaneous transposition. A generous subcutaneous pocket was created anterior to the medial epicondyl and the ulnar nerve was freed from the surrounding tissue and gently transposed. I took great care to preserve the longitudinal vessels of the ulnar nerve and the most distinct extent of my transposition was the first muscular branch of the FCU muscle, flexor, carpal, something muscle, I think. A trough, was, a trough was created in the FCU muscle as to avoid a leading edge of compression in this position. I found that the nerve now had a gentle course without any compression points. Now here's the part that interested me most because when, I, when he talked to me about what exactly he did, in terms of securing it, I was never really too clear. So it, it helps a lot of times to just have this in front of you to be able to read it. It says, next, the anti-brachial fascia of the anterior skin flap was sutured to the fibers of the cubital tunnel at the medial epicondyl with a 3-O PDS in order to avoid dorsal subluxation of the nerve, which I now have. I carefully ensured that the nerve was not constricted again, and again, the elbow was put through a full range of motion and no compression points were identified. So, and then it goes on to kind of talk about suturing me up and whatnot. But so, and then I, I, I talked to him today, he called me back, which is, he's, you know, I have to give him a lot of credit. I'm sure he's busy as hell. And let's see, it's uh, Friday. No, so he is he is in seeing patients today. I think Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are his surgery days. So he called me up and you know one was answering my questions and he said the uh, sort of sling or whatever he created with the anti brachial um, fascia 
sometimes isn't as defined in some people. Um, he could he said that it could have been that mine was thin and because I said did it break or did it not just hold it there and he said you know it's it's hard to tell it could have broken and um, he said basically when he would go in now he would use the muscle fascia so fascia from I guess that FCU muscle or whatever to uh, hold it in and I guess that's a little bit more fibrous a little stronger the danger as he was explaining it and that as some of you might read, if it heals too tightly or around the nerve or pulls on it too much to keep it in the new spot, it can become a new site of, of compression and cause problems. So it could basically keep it from subluxating, but then constrict it and cause the same problems you had because it was subluxating. So there's a very fine line to walk like that. And he said he only had to do redo this in one other person. He said, usually the other method suffices. Um, and then I asked him basically like, you know, if my left one's bothering me more than the right, should I go ahead and just do the left one first and give the right more time to heal? And uh, he said, yeah, you know, that's fine. He said, really, it's up to me. Whatever's bothering me more is, he, he can't tell me that obviously. And, uh, but the, the thing I was curious about is if he did the left, I said, are you going to do the same way you did the right, or are you going to do the, you know, sort of sling with the muscle fascia instead of the anti-brachial fascia? And he said, oh, well, I would take precautions. And, um, he, you know, I think he would do kind of both. You do the anti-brachial fascia along with the muscle fascia to keep it there. So that's a little bit more knowledge that I had yesterday um it's still kind of a feeling out process for me right now i'm trying to like ramp up my activity uh in terms of like working on the computer all day and um just basically trying to to do things normal now um i've been working out and that sometimes causes irritation um for different reasons on both arms so i'm really kind of split as to which ones I want to do is as long as I don't I, I, I haven't played much guitar either um, and I mean I, I could my right hand's not as bothered by that I don't think as my left my left gets numb pretty quick and then I start getting pain on my elbow I actually have pain on the inside of my left right now and that's probably from I had to do a bunch of housework today um, put up a new mesh on my side gate my house so um but so anyway i just gotta see which one annoys me more and then take care of it i've gone back and forth i know i asked you guys and i was kind of leaning towards doing the left next but now uh, after talking with them i'm like well maybe i should do my right and see if uh what he goes back in to do really fixes it because if it doesn't then and he does that on the left then you know, I have to get them both redone. I don't know. So we'll see. I don't really have any uh, anything better to add. Um, I see a lot of you guys uh, asking questions, and I do my best to respond to them. Sorry if I, I miss any. Just if I've missed your question and haven't answered it yet, put it in the comments below this video because it's a lot easier for me to come to these later, uh, the latest videos and answer questions versus going back to some of the others and that gets confusing because people are watching videos at different points and asking questions and YouTube gets confusing with some what sometimes the way they notify. So, uh, yeah, you know, hope all you guys are doing well. Um, again, you know, not to freak any of you guys out that are watching this that need the surgery nine times out of 10 or probably nine and a half times out of 10, you're not going to have any of these issues. Uh, but, my advice to anybody doing this is, you know, make sure you know exactly the procedure the doctor is going to do. Um, you know, go over things like the mobility in your arm. They might think like, oh, you know, his, his nerve doesn't pop over. And, you know, like he said, he, he checked it while he, you know, sutured me up and it wasn't popping over. So maybe mine broke, maybe uh, just as things healed, it stretched out and now it allows it to come over. I don't know. You know, the only way I'll know is when he opens me back up and then, uh, you know, tells me what's going on. But, uh, yeah, be clear with your doctor on what's going on. 
and uh, find some you're comfortable with um, and you know keep a positive frame of mind you know it's and don't overdo it too quickly and I, I don't think I did that you know I waited eight weeks till I did anything and even then I worked back really slow in terms of working out I really wish I could know when exactly things messed up and maybe maybe it could have been after eight weeks maybe I started working out and uh, you know because things felt tight when I first started exercising after this and I just felt well that's normal tightness after the surgery and they're always telling you to get your mobility back and work on your stretches so I did that and I did some light resistance so I would have thought that would help rather than hamper my recovery but I, I again I think it's better when people have physical therapy too I didn't have any physical therapy I just had recommendations on exercise to do and I'm the type of person that if I feel fine you know I'm going to think what I'm doing is fine but maybe it's not so it's it's kind of nice to have somebody there and if you say hey my elbow's kind of tight and you're doing stuff and they go oh you know that that's normal don't worry about that it's just a little bit more reassuring than you feel it and you're like is this should I be you know working to loosen this up or is this part of the healing so all those things I don't really know and I guess it doesn't really matter now, um, but going forward after I get my left one done, it would be nice to, to know those things. But again, you know, you, I, I don't think I overdid anything. I, I took it easy and uh, it was interesting reading his notes uh, when he met with me. It, it, it's kind of depressing for me to uh, read and then, you know, reminisce because, you know, in the first couple of weeks after my surgery, I felt fantastic I felt totally normal I mean it was just it was an awesome feeling you know I thought man I'm I'm gonna be good with this and I'm put this behind me get on the next one and then you know things happen but uh, yeah he was like uh, said something like I was a little concerned with uh, oh, let's see actually it's afterwards uh, he's like uh, you know you know Given the easy recovery period that the patient has had, I am a little concerned about him doing too much too early and carefully cautioned him on his activity restrictions and limitations. Um, and that was definitely why I, he said, at first, actually, he, when I went in there, he told me, wait a month and then you can do whatever you want. So I waited two months because I was like, I don't want to mess anything up. And maybe I should have waited three months. I don't know. It's kind of nervous because uh, actually... Um, I know this is running long, but my arm has been bothering me quite a bit today. And yesterday was one of the first days I did heavy uh, deadlifts again in the gym. And it felt fine when I was doing it. It never really hurts when I'm when doing things. It's always like the day after or, you know, later that night. But uh, it's a little numb today. And I'm guessing because when I'm doing deadlifts, my arms are pretty straight. You know, there's no keeping a slight bend in my elbow because that's going to put a lot of pressure on my uh, biceps tendon and my forearms and uh, so maybe it was that I don't know because like I said I haven't done that in a while and today in particular it's been quite irritating and last night it was kind of bad so I've got a bunch of yard work to do and if you guys recall my original uh, video it was after doing a bunch of yard work that it first started bothering me so uh, which ironically I, 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 I you know it, it could be that I was just doing more and it it, it it didn't bother me at first because I was doing so little and I was being so cautious and maybe just the whole time it's been this way, maybe that sling's still there. And like I said, now I'm doing more and it's just becoming more irritable because I'm doing more. But when I was uh, working in the yard, I would, you know, let me see. I'd hold the leaf floor and, uh, you know, I'd, I'd have my arm straight and I'd be doing this, you know, to blow over here, blow over there, blow over there. So that motion of having my arms straight and then pronating my wrist uh, in or supinating it out definitely causes my nerve to get irritated while it's straight because it, it almost forces it over the bone where maybe before it will kind of rest on the bone. But either or, it's kind of enough to irritate it. But that in particular irritates it. So that's probably why I felt the uh, pain when I or pain and numbness when I did and then I think just I was sleeping on my arms straight I have a bad habit of laying on my 
stomach and kind of sleeping just like a log. And uh, I think that was irritating him. So I don't know. I'm going to have to play it by ear, see how it goes. You know, that's frustrating to not really know what I'm supposed to do next. And really the only person that can answer that is me. I've pretty much flushed out everything with the doctor now at this point. So I might see that guy out here just to, you know, for a second opinion maybe, but I don't think I will go to him. I'm pretty comfortable with my doctor in UCLA, and frankly, I don't think anything that anyone else would have done differently would have benefited me any more or any less. So it is what it is in that regard. Anyway, I hope everybody's doing well. Um, for those of you, and there's a couple on here that have uh, commented that just had your surgeries, get better soon, and uh, you'll be back at it for no time. Somebody was asking me, like, the doctor told them that, like, they wouldn't be able to play guitar or something afterward. That's insane. I was playing guitar, like, the next day. You're not going to be playing for hours on end, but I was playing a little bit. Maybe I shouldn't have been playing that much, but I'm, I'm sure if it was your fretting hand, you should definitely take it easy, but you're not going to lose your chops in, like, a week or two, and it's probably good for your to give your body a little bit of break because I know uh, musicians in particular are like that. They think if they don't practice one day, they're going to totally lose it, and it's just not the case. It's the same with weightlifting too. You know, the guys that are you know working out like, oh, I'm losing my gains, man. I'm having surgery, lose all my gains. To be honest, I didn't really lose that much. I lost fat, but I didn't lose all that much muscle, and it came back fast as hell. So, and my strength's probably almost to where it was before I had the surgery, if not uh, more, more so. So, uh, it's only been four or five months, so it's really not that bad. If I could get the left one done and be done with it, I'd be pretty stoked. So, anyway, I'll stop rambling. If you guys have questions, let me know. And I uh, really appreciate the support and feedback you guys all give me. All right. Aloha.